I'm sure you've seen plenty of videos promoting the great things about the city of Indianapolis, but I'm not sure you've seen one that gives you the other side of the story. So today I'm gonna to share with you the top 10 reasons why people are moving out of Indianapolis. Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team. Atlas Van Lines, you know, the moving company, they claim that 137,000 people moved out of Indiana in 2022. Now, more actually moved in than moved out, but that was not the case in the city of Indianapolis. There's a definite downtrend going on in Indianapolis over the last, oh, decade, decade and a half. They've experienced net out migration. They had 9,200 people move out between 2020 and 2022. So, hey, let's take a look at the top 10 reasons why people are moving out of the city of Indianapolis. The first reason is winter. No, it's not about the snow or the cold. It's just dark and dreary. When I moved from Colorado that first winter, my Lord, I went from six days of sunshine to six days of darkness. It gets old. The number two reason comes in the summertime. It's the humidity. We don't have the dry heat, the kind that you have out west. No, this is wet and a lot of people don't care for it, but that makes them sure love their air conditioning. The number three reason is bugs. When I lived in Colorado, we didn't even have screens on the windows. It was great, but that's not the case here. But hey, we're not Florida either. You know, I had some clients that two years ago moved down to Florida, and then this past year they moved back up. And the reason? Bugs this big, or so they claim. Hey, we don't have that, but we do have mosquitoes. And if you're out hiking like I was last weekend with my dogs, when I got back, I made sure that there weren't any on me and there weren't any on the dogs. It's not a big problem, but you want to keep an eye out for it. Number four is the critters. Hey, things live here. You might get uh, squirrels in your attic or worse, raccoons. So, and hey, even worse than that is the contractors that come around and want to charge you five grand to get them out of there. It doesn't cost that. It's a couple hundred bucks for an exterminator to get rid of them, okay? And if you keep things sealed up, you don't have the problem. Biggest problem I have, deer and rabbits in my garden. God, keeping them out of there so that I have some, all that hard work comes to uh, fruition. Now that's a chore. Number five is floods. Every spring, the White River and the other big rivers, they flood. So it's not so much about the flood damage, it's about the flood insurance. That can be anywhere from two to four grand on a house if it's in a flood hazard zone. Now, most houses aren't, but if one is, you could be looking at two to four grand. On the other hand, if it's not in one of the higher flood hazard zones, it might only be 500 bucks. And we can help you out with that, figure out what the real situation is, okay? So don't let that scare you off if you see a house that says uh, flood insurance required. Hey, if you'd like to learn more about real estate in the greater Indianapolis area, or maybe you wanna walk through a home that you've seen advertised, text me or book a call. Number six is growth, and that brings congestion. There is so much more traffic than there was 20 years ago. I mean, it's not Chicago or New York, but there's traffic now that there didn't used to be. And I'm sick and tired of cone zones. Even if, in the end, it usually translates to improved traffic flow. Number seven is crime. The city of Indianapolis has a higher crime rate than the national average. Heck, it gives Chicago a run for its money some months. And after a homicide in one neighborhood where I had a listing, I pick and choose what neighborhoods I work in now. And when I get out of the car in certain neighborhoods, I've got my bear spray with me. And it's not because there's any bears in the neighborhood. And I've got a lot of friends that carry. Fortunately, none of that is necessary in the suburbs. Number eight. Politically, there are two Indianas. The city has become a blue hive, while the rural area is conservative. There are a lot of Trump flags there. The suburbs are more in between, but they vote Republican about two to one. The city of Indianapolis itself has a long history of really solid leadership, but party affiliation aside, the current city administration has been an absolute disaster. When they show up for work, they make it about as bureaucratic and dysfunctional as possible. You know, I do zoning work for my clients in a number of different counties. And the one that I hate the most to do anything in is Indianapolis. It's just harder, it's more expensive, and it's more bureaucratic. And say you're doing a flip. To get a building permit in Indianapolis, it takes five weeks to get the initial response. And then God forbid, if you wanna to talk to a real person, 
it makes it really, really difficult to do a job. Whereas in a lot of the outlying counties, it's a really pretty simple process. You know, I have one former client, he's a realtor now in fact, but for 20 years he did about two dozen flips a year. I mean, he had a flip business. And he started out in Indianapolis, but now will not do a flip in Indianapolis. He'll do one in any county in the state just about, but not Indianapolis. So what's that tell you? And the court systems are just as bad. I had a deal a couple years ago, it was an estate, and uh, I had sold the property and it had gone through inspections and it had gone through appraisal, and uh, all of a sudden, we're just getting ready to close, and an ex-wife from 20 some years ago shows up and files uh, to contest the will. She hadn't even lived in the house. It took five months for the court system to throw that case out. It's crazy. The court's action or inaction cost my clients about $30,000. The city administration is trying to turn the city of Indianapolis into New York City or San Francisco. They're not there yet, but they're working on it. Thank heavens, the suburbs have not been infected. So if you're considering moving to central Indiana, we can help coach you to the best options. You'll want to be sure to pick up our relocation guide. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide, and you can get your own copy in the comments section below. Number nine is the city's school systems. The Indianapolis Public School Systems, or IPS as it's uh, more commonly known, are rated C by niche.com. C is satisfactory, right? But only if you're good with 20% math proficiency at grade level and 14% reading proficiency at grade level. Now, the private schools in the city are generally A rated and have healthy enrollments. Of course, their tuition is not cheap. And meanwhile, Many suburban schools are A-rated and graduated like 97, 98% of their enrollment. Number 10, put it all together, what I see. Young people, they leave college, they move to the city, they get their first apartment because they like the nightlife, they like all the excitement. Hey, my kids are no exception. Hell, I lived in Broad Ripple back in the day. But when it comes time to start a family or to send kids to school, guess what? The city and the suburbs are not at all similar. Hamilton County has the state's largest positive in-migration of any county in the state. 65,000 people in-migrated between 2010 and 2020. That's two times the next county. It has A-rated schools, it has a lack of crime, and it has good paying jobs that make it a magnet. And it is now the fastest growing county in the state. In fact, Forbes magazine named Hamilton County the best place in the country to raise a family. Now, Zillow just named Indianapolis the fourth hottest housing market in the country. But you may want to rethink the city of Indianapolis proper or pick your neighborhoods carefully. Hey, or move to the suburbs. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday. We tour new construction homes for sale. On Thursday, we check out existing homes in their neighborhoods. And on Saturday, we do a segment on what it's like living in Indiana. You know, over half of my clients are repeat business. So whether you're buying or selling, I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. If you found this video helpful, you'll love this next one. Watch it right now.